Hello everybody, this is Monkey Puzzle, and it's a beautiful day here in Newtopia, and welcome to the real episode 52 of Monkey Wrenching the Beast. And as promised today, I want to jump straight into really getting going on our bee base, so we can get some bees going. And, uh, you know, I have a small start on it, but if, if you've been following, you saw the little bit I've done so far, and you saw me hollow out the hill in the autumn biome where they're going to go, but it's time to really get somewhere with it. And I've been trying to get everything ready uh, in order to really get somewhere today, and one of the last things I think uh, I need, well, to prepare, and there's other things we're going to make right off, uh, is a new wand of equal trade. Uh, because uh, this is just a really handy tool, and uh, we're going to be a little, doing a little decorating at the base as well, so I think that's going to come in handy. And I'm actually curious if we can directly enchant this and we can so let's do it uh, and I promise this is gonna lead to the bees this time not show you all kinds of enchanting like I did last time although I had a lot of fun with that uh, and I want to do more some of the things didn't go oop, I want to go over here quite as I wanted but it's all a learning process so let's just see what happens when we enchant this at 30 okay we get charging one which is good and then uh, let's see let's go ahead and from the thumb craft chest here I got one more repair so let's put a repair one on it uh, oops just missed it uh, oh yeah I probably gonna need some more XP so but let's see how much we're gonna need uh, why doesn't that work what the heck no repair why not I thought they were supposed to go on these Oh well, <laughs> we've got that. Uh, not too useful. But anyway, we've got a new one because the old one was about to run out. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to see is, uh, where's my old one? Right here. Can we fix them? Do they, do they go together like this? Let's see. No, they don't. Alright, well, onward. So there's a number of things we're going to need to do the bees. And I've got them all kind of put together in here. Uh, the first thing is, uh, on this side, we've got a whole bunch of bee stuff. Not that much, but there's even a lot more on the other one. But uh, we need things to move and store bees with. Because uh, if you remember, the diamond chest over at the bee base is full of bees. Um, so the first thing I want to make over here is a uh, apiarist chest. So let's go ahead and do that. This is what it, the recipe looks like. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make two of them uh, because I want to keep a chest. And then I'm going to also use one of the chests uh, for something else. So here are two apiarist chests. So these are specialized chests for storing bees in. I've never used one. I'm actually pretty new to bees. I've been studying the process in some other uh, Let's Plays, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of doing a lot of this for the first time. So we wanted an extra chest because we're going to make an Apiarist backpack. Now, an Apiarist backpack has 125 slots, which is just immense, uh, especially for the first level backpack. If you look at all the other backpacks, they'll start with 15, and then you can upgrade them to 45. Uh, they're all pretty much the same formula like that. But the Apiarist are the, is the only one that starts at 125, and there is no upgrade to it. And that's because bees don't stack, and uh, that just can be really an issue. So it looks like that. Um, so you can see we needed one of these in here, which is why I made an extra one. And, oh, look, I got some sticks. I didn't uh, account for that. There it is. Another thing I want to make to get ready is an indexer. Uh, let me remember how to make that. An indexer is basically infinite categorized sortable storage for bees, which is great because uh, it's the same issue that I was talking about, how they don't stack. So to make an indexer, first we need to make an apiarist machine. And we're going to need this 
for a whole number of things. And to do that, we need sturdy casing. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I've actually made the sturdy casings yet. So sturdy casing, I believe, is just bronze like that. Yeah, and let's go ahead and make about eight of these, say, because we're going to need to make a lot of this. Uh, so let's put all these back. And then, uh, let's see, I forgot actually what material that was. I think that's actually copper. Yeah, that's copper. So let's go ahead and make... Uh, eight a APRS machine for now and uh, we may need to make more later uh, but that should get us started um, and then that's going to lead to our indexer to start with so let's get the recipe for that and that's going to take a diamond and some redstone and some more chests so there those are and now we've got pretty much infinite B storage uh, so that's great uh, and then I'm looking at my list here of all the stuff I wanted to make. An acclimatizer is also something that uh, is going to be very handy for what we're doing. So let's go ahead and make one of those. And the recipe looks like that. So uh, we have Apiaris machine um, still in there. But let's put these back and clear this out. And okay, so we still need the redstone down here. And then when I re went ahead and uh, made some lava cans already and some water cans and this is going to help us uh, basically change the needs of the bee so that we can do them in uh, alternative biomes uh, rather than the ones that they prefer so uh, we can change uh, which biomes they can be in basically their humidity tolerances and their temperature tolerances so we've got that and let me see I think that's we're almost in pretty good shape uh, these are also going to be helpful for getting us to the next level of um, of the all the B stuff I think it was on uh, page 30 over here let's just go ahead I was doing a little research ahead of time these are a lot of the machines we're going to need in the future when we get really fancy I don't think I'm going to go there today because it's just a little ahead of us. But there's all these really advanced genetic machines. I think the first ones we're going to need, we're going to need the, uh, let me see, the gene pool. Because that's what's going to melt them down into DNA when we want to start messing with that. And the next one I think is the isolator and the replicator. Uh, maybe not the replicator, but the uh, purifier and then the inoculator. Uh, we might want to start with a gene pool. Yeah, let's go ahead and make that. And their base block is the genetic machine, just like the lower tier ones was the apiaris machine. So we can take uh, uh, this apiaris machine. And oh, look, I actually made some of these things already. I've made uh, a little bit more than we're going to be able to use right now. But uh, let's go ahead and do this and just make a bunch of these because we're going to need a lot uh, in the future anyway so that gave me six um, okay uh, we'll take that and then let's go ahead and make the gene pool um, I'm gonna need a couple more tanks I had two on me um, and I'm gonna need let me see these take uh, they take eight glass each so we'll need 16 um, and where did I have the other two tanks? There they are. So let's go ahead and make uh, two more tanks. And then we got the four. And then so the gen the gene pool takes one of these. And we need another glass. Great thing about these project tables is even when you mess up, uh, you don't lose your progress right here although I did lose my recipe so let's try that again uh, there it is uh, oh wait no that's the wrong one we need the gene pool there it is so we've got that in the middle already our piece of glass our four tanks the redstone um, and it looks like I need a little gold too, which we can do that. 
Time to bring some more gold over here from the warehouse. Oops, wrong thing. Uh, okay, so that was a lot of crafting without too much explanation, but I just wanted to get the stuff together that we're going to need. Actually, that can stay there because we're going to make more things with those later, but we need that, and we need that, um, and we need this. So we'll come back to making some more of these things later, but that's going to give us a really good start. Um, so one of the things we're going to be able to do is store a lot of these bees here. And I think with this backpack, uh, hopefully I don't regret this, but I think I'm going to be able to do that. Yep. And, oh yeah, I've got my Silk Touch uh, Advanced Diamond Drill now. So I can break things and I still get the Smooth Stone. Yeah, so all that stuff just went nicely into this backpack. Wow. Okay. And, yeah, okay. Oh, so some of the stuff... I mean, this just takes uh, bees. And I've got 180 queens, 193. That can't be right. <laughs> I don't think I had that many on me. Yeah. Huh. I'm not sure what those numbers mean. Because I do not have 180 queens on me. I think this is the whole thing. But it gives me a bunch of information about them. And that's very cool. Um, and then uh, over here I've got stuff as well. Uh, let's take these with us. Um, and the rest I'm just going to have to leave for now. So let's head over to the bee biome. Uh, one of the things I was calling it, or just to the bees, and get to work. Uh, if you were with me before, um, I chose this autumn biome to be our place for the bees. One, because I was looking for some place that was normal temperature and normal humidity, which is where you can do the most bees. Now, there's some that won't work here, uh, but uh, the greatest number of them will. And it's going to be an easy middle ground to acclimatize the bees that don't want to be here uh, in order to work here. My Thomcraft base is right over there. Nido Rio's Thomcraft base is right over there and we've got this lovely birch biome over here but the shape of this hill uh, was also what attracted me and uh, because I'll show you what I did back here uh, for the folks who didn't see it before but I've hollowed out uh, behind it because uh, it gives me a nice space from which to automate the apiaries but still uh, leave them uh, looking very unindustrial from the front. Uh, they're kind of embedded in the hill, but I'm going to work with that, and I think that's going to be fine. So first thing I want to do is do a little decorating here, because we're going to put down some of our new tools and our new machines and get ready to set up some beehives. And before the end of this episode, I want to at least get a few hives automated and going so you can see the process and then you know I can be free to keep setting them up off camera and bring you back but as usual I want to at least start the process on camera so uh, let me get a few things together and I will be with you in just a minute or for you it's going to be uh, probably less than a second alright I'm back and I think I got myself somewhat organized um, just so you can see or be reminded, this old chest is totally full of bees. So that was part of why I made that indexer, which we'll get to in a minute. And then this has a lot of the stuff I'm going to need. I put all our machines in here and some of the things we've been making that we've got our f a certain kind of frames here, chocolate frames and uh, impregnated frames and lots of materials to make more of these. And also... Uh, We've got flowers for the bees and that thomium scoop with Repair 2 that we made in the last episode. But first, uh, we need to do a little decorating in here. We need a floor, because uh, this will not do. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. I'm going to go ahead and make a... Ooh, look at that. That's neat. They'll stay put. Uh, a perimeter. I want to use this red rock I decided to start with. And that's so great. I've got that silk touch and it picks that 
uh, picks the grass blocks up. I like that. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to get started on this, and I'll bring you back uh, when I'm ready to uh, put it together. All right, I went ahead and outlined the area I want to do with the red rock, and then I'm just going to right-click on that, and then I can go ahead. <laughs> this is why I went ahead and made another one of these and just replace all this inside. I was thinking about doing the red rock brick, but I think, you know, uh, since we're being, uh, getting into nature here with the bees and stuff, we could just give it natural like this. Um, we could try it with the brick and see if we like that better. Uh, let's try some of it. Uh, let me see, we need to put uh, one of them down. Let's go ahead and replace one of these uh, with the brick and shift right click on that and see what we think about that. Yeah, I actually think I like the regular one better. I mean, this has a little bit more structure to it, but uh, yeah, no, let's go back to this one, I think. Yeah, I love <laughs> doing whole areas like that with a click. And uh, maybe we want this to be that. And this is going to be our little outdoor deck right here. Um, I've made it so the mobs can't get in here from over here either. It's just a little too high for them to get up. So we're relatively safe here. And let's go ahead make it like that. Sure. Uh, and you know we can keep refining this as we go. Um, but just trying to get a start at least to work with and no, this one. Okay, so that's the beginning. Um, now let's put some of our stuff down here. Uh, let's begin with the uh, the indexer right here. Um, I don't think the indexer needs any power. And I'm not sure how this is all going to go. I'm sure I'm going to have to rearrange. I'm imagining a lot of the machines along here, and I'm going to have to leave room for power behind them. I think this wall is only one thick right now, so I'll have to build them out. So when we need have our machines that need power, we'll put them out here. Um, let's just put our indexer here for now. I wonder if we can move it after we put some bees in here. Uh, let's see, where's our bee backpack? Can we do like a shift right click in there? No, that doesn't work. So we're going to actually have to uh, place them all manually? Uh, really? Um, Alright, let me get some of this other stuff out of my inventory and let's try that uh, once I do that. Alright, managed to make a little space in my inventory. And uh, can we do this? No, we can't move them all at once. Uh, I can do the shift uh, left click to get them out at least. So let's put uh, these guys in here. So just go ahead. How do we do this? They won't let go. Uh, oh, okay, I just have to shift click them in I guess. It's funny because I can't place them. There's no slots until they go in. And then uh, now there's no organization by species, by type, so that's by uh, queens, princesses, drones, and none. So, okay. So we can work with that. Um, the question I had is uh, if I want to move this at some point, can I do this? I, I watched uh, Direwolf do this with a chest today, and I was really amazed. He went ahead and picked it up uh, and it's not working it works there but uh, it doesn't work there and uh, once we put a ton of bees in here it's going to be pretty much where it goes forever but uh, I think that's a decent spot it's kind of centered here uh, yeah I guess uh, we're just going to have to commit uh, to that so eat some steak while I think about it <laughs> and uh, yeah I'm gonna put it there and I guess if we have to transfer it out later uh, we can go ahead and do that um, so I'm just gonna keep doing the process here 
of uh, moving all the bees over. So these are all the bees that were at our savanna base, and I'm going to move these in there. And we'll have everybody in here, so I'll get back to you when I've done that. All right, so all the bees I've collected so far between me and Nilo Rio are all in here. Uh, so it doesn't even really tell me how many there are. But you can see, like, I've got it sorted by species, and here are forest drones, and these are meadow drones and common drones, uh, and we got cultivated and uh, diligent, unweary, steadfast, uh, all kinds of species, and we'll go into this later. I don't think I can really go into breeding in this episode because... 30 minutes just goes by so quickly. So today, I think we're going to mainly focus on just getting things set up here somewhat. Um, and then we will go into the details of breeding later. Um, so this is the master storage device for bees. Uh, below that, you know, was the apiarist chest, um, which looks a lot like the apiarist backpack. So interesting oh so it, it's kept track of how many species we found so far perhaps but I still I need to look this up because we have not had 180 queens so far um, so I don't know what this means but uh, yeah maybe we have 13 species now I'm not sure anyway uh, I'm figuring we can have the master uh, storage here and then sub storage for uh, different species we're working with you know like if I'm trying to get to the imperial bees for instance is one of our, our goals um, and I'll talk about doing that later we can maybe have a chest with them uh, apiaris chest perhaps or maybe just a regular chest if that works out but let's go ahead and just get a couple uh, apiaries automated. And I'll just use those two as examples. I'm not necessarily going to commit myself to keeping them right there. There's actually going to be a whole bunch of them in here as we go along. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and start with, uh, let's see, what do we got here? We've got cultivated drones and a cultivated princess. So those are very basic uh, kind of a starting species that you can build a lot of other things from and we and we bred those I bred those from uh, some of the wild bees from meadows and forest drones um, and I'll go into that later like I said okay so to start with uh, let's go ahead and put the frames in here can I shift click them in I can uh, but you can't automate the frames. That's the one thing we're not going to be able to automate in this process. And the frames just help the bees produce more goodies. Uh, so if you have those in there, you're going to get more stuff. Um, and the way you get a hive going manually is you just put a princess in with a drone. These drones are all exactly identical, so they stack. Otherwise, they wouldn't stack at all. And we put these in here, and they're going to breed and once this bar goes up we're going to get a queen now the queen is going to live a certain amount of time and as she lives she's going to produce stuff here she's going to produce honey probably maybe other products depending on what species she is uh, the honey comes in the form of honeycomb which needs to be processed and the uh, will also get a princess and some drones and you only get one princess uh, it's nighttime, so we're not seeing any activity there because these guys don't work at night. And now I can show you what the hive looks like when it's active. So, first thing you see is you get particle effects, you get little bees flying around. <laughs> and they're actually pretty detailed if you look at them, they got little stripes and stuff. They're very cool and they extend fairly far. Uh, we can go a little ways away and still see them. And then you can see that the queen's life is slowly going down and as she does that she'll produce stuff here these drones are just extra right now we could take them out they're not part of the process at this point uh, you can just leave them in there and the next drone will breed with the next princess when you put them put her in there um, oh see we got a honeycomb so yeah these guys are doing their thing um, so from behind 
uh, we're going to automate it. Now we could just do it manually like that forever, um, but even if I automate it, I'm going to be spending way too much time here. So to start that process, uh, we're going to need diamond transport pipes. Uh, and let's get six of them right now. And the reason I'm going to get six is because I have 12 propolis. And we're going to make the next level of pipe. Now, uh, for those of you who know, diamond pipes are really good at sorting items. They have a little interface that you can choose which items they send where. Now, if you take the diamond pipe and you put propolis on either side of it, you get an apiarist pipe. And it works very similarly to a diamond pipe, except it gives you more options that are specific to bees. So those are going to be very useful to us here. And I'm just realizing that there's a couple other kinds of pipe that I may not have brought. Uh, no, I'm going to need some gold pipe, um, which I don't think I have. So I'm going to go grab that, and I'll meet you back here. Stay put. All right, well, I think I've got it together to pull this off. Uh, I've never done this before, so we'll see how it turns out. But I have watched folks do it on YouTube, uh, most notably DireWolf20. Um, but uh, what I know is that, uh, oh, and this process is finished. So the queen has died. She's left us a honeycomb, two drones, and a princess. So let's put that back in here. We can go ahead and keep stacking these drones. Uh, they're all genetically identical at this point because I've purebred this species, so otherwise uh, drones may not be able to stack or go back in there. Um, but let's get that going. I'm going to leave this honeycomb in here for now because I'm going to try to pull it out automatically. So as I was saying, to pull stuff out of this part of the inventory, uh, I think we need to pull stuff out the back, or probably any side would work but I don't think the top or the bottom works for this. So let's go ahead and put a uh, wooden transport pipe. I need to shift that right click uh, to extract. So that's just the basic. And we're going to use an autarkic gate to power this. And that's going to be able to uh, turn it on and off according to uh, whatever is happening inside. Um, and then uh, we're going to send things down. Oops, didn't mean that one to go there and then um, we're gonna use our apiarist pipe here and I'm realizing I didn't even tell you where that propolis came from that I used to make this but we're gonna get into that later so let's go ahead and put that there uh, my right click doubled itself and sent us straight into this interface so you can see it is very much like a diamond pipe where we can choose uh, which uh, choose uh, which way things go through these various colored parts. Uh, so right now we have a white part and a red part um, and say we sent something this way now we have a green part. Um, so uh, just for demonstration purposes because I'm gonna have to figure out where everything else goes in the long run let's just go ahead and put the apiarist chest here and I've got an iron chest that we can go ahead and put down here. Now I'm not uh, holding myself to these locations. In fact, I know they're going to change. But I just want to pull off one time just setting up the basic automating of an apiary. So uh, before we turn this on and start pumping stuff out of here, let's see if we can get this right. So the white uh, the white direction is the one that goes back into the hive and that's just represented with gray on this interface so we want to send bees back into there and any bees because it could be a princess or a drone and we definitely want the princess to go up there but we also want at least one drone in there for it to be able to breed now we've got a stack of drones in there already but eventually that would wear uh, run out if we didn't keep sending drones up into there. So we're going to send any bees that way. And then, let me see, down here into the iron chest with the black, I'd like to send items. So that's going to be honeycombs and propolis and anything else that uh, is produced in here. And that really depends on the species of bee. Um, and then in the green path, 
Uh, this is where we want the extra bees to go. Uh, not like the extra bees mod, but uh, any drones that don't fit in here. Because uh, there's only going to be one princess, so hopefully she's always going to end up in there. So on the green, we want to choose anything. Um, and, you know, it's kind of counterintuitive because you think, well, won't anything go that way? Well, I think the way it works is if you have something specifically, uh, uh, if you have something specified to go down one of these, it'll choose that first. So items will go down the black over the anything, and bees will go to the white over that too. But if there are bees that don't fit in there, they'll go this way. This should work. So let's go ahead and try it out. Let's turn this on. Um, Let's see what options we have here. Uh, items in inventory is probably going to be the most generic way we can do it. So if anything is in there, and in the inventory, I believe, with the, for the extraction, only counts as this area, not this area. And she's finished again. So let's go ahead, put her back. Oh, uh, actually, oh well, I can't put her back now. I should have left her in there to see if this would start over again. Um, but we'll get another chance. So, yeah. Um, and what are our other options? I wonder if there's any B-specific options. Uh, I can... Oh, there is. Uh, let's get rid of any eye so we can see what's going on here. Missing Queen or Princess. So we could have this just activate at the end when the Queen is gone. Um, so the, all the items would come at once rather than as they're produced. A missing drone, no frames. Okay, uh, interesting. Um, but let's just leave it at the, uh, just to keep it simple, items in inventory. And if there's items in inventory, give us an energy pulse. So let's see what happens. Okay, we got stuff coming out. Uh, and which way did they go? I didn't even see. All right, we got the honeycomb in there. And we didn't get anybody in here because they all went in here, hopefully. So I'm going to let this cycle through one more time. And as it's reaching the end and the uh, queen is about to die, we'll check out uh, what's going on. I think it's nighttime right now. So I'm going to need to sleep again and to get this going and I'll come back again when we're at the end of the cycle uh, for that thing. Okay. Good morning. And by the way, if you saw me set up the golems here to farm the flax, uh, they did their job so well that I had to uh, lay them off and lay them down because they filled this whole chest. I've pulled a couple stacks of string in the meantime that I've used for various things, but uh, they did a good job, so they had to stop for now because, uh, yeah, they were out of space. I could have them going uh, forever. Oops, sorry. Uh, you guys, I don't even have a hoe here. Oh, well, I'm messing it up. So that has a little ways to go. While that's happening, uh, let's just do a little basic layout of how we want some stuff to go in here. Um, let's move that over. For now, let's put it over here. Uh, Where did my book go? Right there. So that's our way back to the Savannah base. Um, so we got some machines that we want to set up here. Um, you know, I two machines that I forgot to make that we're going to need are a centrifuge and a squeezer. And that's for processing the honeycomb and the honey drops. Or the, uh, let me see. Yeah, well, you get the honeycomb, and that uh, gives you uh, the honey drops and sometimes propolis and other things as well. And if you want to get honey from these, you have to squeeze them. So I didn't make those yet, but let's just represent them. Uh, let's say that they're going to go over here. And I think we do... We're, this does become one thick at that point, but it's not over here. So uh, we could put power behind there. So let's say 
that those two things are going to go, oh, I don't know, let's say they're going to go uh, here and here. Uh, and I reserve the right to change my mind later because uh, I've never set this all up before. And then we're going to need some of our fancy B machines here. So let's get those out. So this just finished. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, it's pulling all the bees out. And it looks like they got sent back up. So that was successful. Uh, we went ahead and got another queen without us ever touching it. So that looks like it works. Uh, we haven't got any bees in there yet because the, oops, the drones are still stacking in here. Um, and we are getting all our honeycomb accumulating down here. So we're going to have to figure out some way that that pipes over here uh, to these guys. So I'll probably go down under here and through that way and set up a network of pipes that all go that way. But uh, we'll see what happens. Um, as I get this more set up, it'll hopefully it'll all kind of sort itself out. Uh, but yeah, remember that this is uh, standing for the uh, centrifuge and the squeezer for now. And then we're going to need to figure out what to do uh, with the rest of these machines. And they're going to need power as well. This is the uh, acclimatizer and the gene pool. So like I said before, this is for modifying the temperature and the humidity that the bees need. And this is for melting them down <laughs> to DNA when you have a lot extra. And there'll be uses for that later too. And plus it's just really pretty. So I'm actually not sure where these are going to go yet. Um, and because this is like a one thick wall, if I was going to put them here, uh, well, I guess power could come from underneath, couldn't it? So we could uh, do the acclimatizer and the gene pool, uh, but the gene pool is going to have to feed into a uh, tank. Maybe the gene pool goes downstairs because I have a second level of um, uh, flat area for machines. So maybe the gene pool would go like over here somewhere and then we'll have a tank for DNA. I'm not sure yet. But uh, I think we've got, and as far as we're going to be able to get today, just some of the basics fleshed out here. I'm sorry I had to go so quick, and there's so much more detail I want to go into about bee breeding and all that. But I think that's going to have to be the next episode. But at least we're getting going here. We've got some of the basic machines uh, happening. Uh, <laughs> even if they're represented by cobblestone. Um, but this was the key thing I wanted to get to today, is actually automating an apiary. Uh, I think it was successful. We got our items going down there. I think bees will go here once they can't fit in here anymore. But we actually had a cycle uh, redo itself and got a new queen going uh, just from this. So this will work whenever we have a cycle that can just keep going. When we need to do some hands-on breeding and we need to pay attention to what the progeny is, we won't be able to do it this way. But when we get into straight production, when we have purebred species that aren't going to change much, this is what we do. And that's how we can acquire more honeycomb and more other products. So once we get into production, uh, this is the setup. So yeah, it's funny. Uh, Aaron B, who uh, I've been interacting with a lot, another uh, FTB YouTuber, he just did a whole B thing uh, with his series, uh, his last episode as well. So I guess we're in sync with the bees right now. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take the liberty to take this a step further. I'm going to get some more uh, apiary set up and automated. I'm going to think a little bit harder about how the machines are going to go and how the power is going to get set up here. And then next time I bring you back, I'll show you the what I figured out and uh, we'll have a little time to get more into the basics of bee breeding. 
uh, and you know I'm not going to involve you guys all the time in all the breeding because you know it gets pretty tweaky and intense but I definitely think I should just introduce folks to some of the basics of it and show uh, you know what I'm going to be involved in here so anyway I hope this was interesting to you uh, getting into the bees and getting this all set up I think it's going to be really neat and cool um, and one more part is that uh, we're going to send some hives out here too and this is going to be a great place for doing some tree breeding and that's a whole nother subject in itself so we'll be breeding bees and breeding trees and getting all manner of things from both so this is the end of episode 52 and I'm still monkey puzzle thank you for joining me folks and I hope you'll join me next time I also heartily encourage you all to check out my Inferno Mind series, which hasn't been getting nearly the views that this has been getting, but uh, check it out. I'm warming up and I'm making a lot of progress there and uh, haven't died yet. <laughs> Knock on grass block. Uh, anyway, Monkey Puzzle, still signing out. Bye-bye.